So yeah, the first thing I normally do is yeah, set up the plant, then I'm gonna do my walk around, check everything, make sure everything is running the way it should. It might be a little loud, kind of hard to hear me in here, but uh, let's go for a walk. So these two chemicals are our sodium bisulfite, and this one's sodium hypochlorite. Um, the sodium bisulfite we don't use all the time. Basically, we use it to um, help neutralize the ultrafiltration units, which are these two units right behind us here. So um, yeah, they only use maybe once or twice a month, that sort of thing. And our sodium hypochlorite, um, if you take a look over here, we have actually four chemical injection pumps. So two of the pumps are for um, disinfection. So basically we add it to our finished product, our, our treated water, just to ensure there's no um, microorganisms, that sort of thing living inside the, the water. We wanna, we wanna kill basically everything that's in the water that could cause, make people sick, right? So that's what those two pumps do. And these two right here, are for cleaning our uh, ultra filtration units again. We do a co what's called a recovery clean. So that's why you have two uh, chemical injection setups there for the sodium hyp hypochlorite. And yeah, they keep we keep these two chemicals separate from everything else over there because we don't want our uh, sodium hypochlorite mixing with the acid, that sort of thing. So it's okay because uh, sodium bisulfite actually neutralizes the sodium hypochlorite. So that's kind of why they're, they're situated that way. We'll get back to the chemicals in a bit, but uh, I kind of like to do a loop inside the plant, so that's why I check those two things first. But basically, I'm coming to our, our transmission pumps and our distribution system. So these two pumps right here are actually our truck fill pumps, and that's our truck fill pipe leading outside to fill up any uh, water trucks that are coming to pull water for residents that are on cisterns. And those two pumps over there, and we have one pump missing right now, a third transmission pump. Those ones actually feed the community. Um, anybody that's tied into the water line between here and what we call the core pump house, get fed off these three pumps. And then we have another core pump house out there which kind of uh, has their own distribution system and those feed the, uh, the community. So right now I'm basically checking pressures and volume usage just to see what was pushed last night and to make sure the pressures are still okay so we don't have a leak or a problem in the, in the distribution system. Yeah, this meter right here is the distribution uh, meter. So this is basically everything that's leaving the water treatment plant going to the community. It goes through here, minus what we're uh, minus what we're filling the trucks here at. But trucks barely come fill here. Maybe like six, seven loads a week. So basically, everything is getting pushed out from here. So here we have our uh, what you call it our online chlorine analyzer. It's a Hawk CL17. Basically, it gives out a reading of your free chlorine residual as it's as it's leaving the distribution or going into the distribution system. So basically, we always want to ensure that these bottles are full. Um, and when we do replace the bottles, we also clean clean the system as well to make sure it's reading properly. And then this one here is our uh, pH, gives us a pH reading and a turbidity reading as it's leaving, uh, leaving the plant into our distribution system. This one here is self-cleaning. That's what this, uh, this motor here is for. So we don't really have to do too much maintenance on it. Um, we do have to calibrate these every now and then. Same with our pH probe but once a month or once every three months, I believe, for this guy. So we just want to make sure those are, are operating well. And uh, it actually gives us a flow rate reading right there. So we want to make sure that's at, at least 0.1 liters per minute going through our turbidimeter to give us a proper turbidity reading. And then right here we have our, uh, our level. So it's 3.04 meters right now is our level in the in the uh, transmission well or the distribution well, I guess, the main clear well. So we also, we check that every day. That's just our plant usage water. So anything that we, uh, any cleaning, any chemicals that we fill, any solutions that we make, it'll be read off of that meter. And 
And then this one here is our truck fill meter. We'll get back to our chemicals again. So this one right here is our, our sulfuric acid. Um, this one's basically used for pH adjustment. So we pump uh, sulfuric acid prior to uh, the water going into our ultrafiltration units. Um, basically, we're trying to bring the pH down to right around 6.8. Um, which gives us the, the most effective treatment, I suppose. Here we have our citric acid. Now the citric acid is only used when we're doing a recovery clean on our ultrafiltration units. So it's intermittently used, but once, twice a month, that sort of thing. But uh, we still check the levels and make sure, you know, nothing's out of the ordinary. This one here labeled coagulant tank, it's actually clear pack 180. So this is our primary coagulant. We're pumping this into our raw water as it's going into our clarifier. We'll look at our clarifier a little bit later, but uh, this is our primary coagulant. Um, we try to keep it right around a dosage rate of 160 milligrams per liter. Um, we do tend to change it every now and then with, when the water changes conditions. Um, typically we'll do a jar test prior to see what type of dosage rate works the best, but uh, for right now we're, we're doing 160 milligrams per liter. This, one's here, this one here is labeled a polymer tank. It's, uh, it's sort of a coagulant aid, I suppose. Um, it helps build up the flock. It works. We don't, we don't inject it at the same point as the clear pack 180, but we inject it just a little bit further down in the clarifier, but it actually helps build up that flock. It makes it stronger um, and it helps settle out that flock and, and creates that sludge bed inside the clarifier. So basically we have these two chemicals right now pumping into our raw water as it's going into the clarifier. This one here is our anti-scalant. This one is just basically pumped into our, um, our reverse osmosis uh, trains. Uh, to pump into the water as it goes into the RO trains, but um, basically it's just trying to prevent any scaling forming on the membrane fibers itself, hence the term anti-scaling. You'll notice how they kind of have every chemical situated separately, like all our acids basically are in this side, our anti-scaling sits alone, and then inside here our last chemical is our sodium hydroxide. So basically we, we pump this into our treated water, just to bring up the pH because after going through the ultrafiltration units, the RO units, um, the pH does come down quite a bit. So we don't want it to be too corrosive because then it'll have adverse effects on the uh, piping and the distribution system, the valves, that sort of thing. So we, we uh, pump some sodium hydroxide, try to get the pH above seven, usually right around 7.5. Um, so yeah, that's what this, what this does. And this chemical, as you can see, is, is a little messy. It's a very hazardous chemical and it's very temperature sensitive. So anything, anytime this room goes below 15 degrees Celsius, uh, a lot of the, uh, they'll start to crystallize a lot of sodium hydroxide, even inside the chemical lines and that sort of thing. So it's, it's why we have it in a separate room. We have a heater in here. And then if you look outside in the plant, you'll notice there's some heat trace on the, uh, chemical injection line as well, and some insulation on these lines too. Checking the chemical systems that go to the UF, so our all water unit, the clarifier, and the RO, so that's kind of what I'm gonna be doing now. So yeah, we're just trying to find out how much water was treated coming out of the UF. And that one's train number two. What I'm checking here is the pressure differential. Um, right now it's 48 PSI going in. So this is our raw water line coming from the lake itself. We have two, uh, two raw water transfer pumps that are situated down by the lake. I don't know if we'll get a chance to see them today, but yeah, they're probably about half a kilometer down the road over there. Basically what I'm checking is the pressure differential. So I have 48 PSI here. I have 48 PSI there as well. Reason I'm doing that check is that there's actually a strainer inside there which tends to clog up after a while. So I just want to make sure that it's free flowing. There's no, no issues there. 
Um, that strainer will catch any any big debris that's coming through the raw water pump. Um, so yeah, that's basically what I'm doing right now. And then this is our raw water meter, which is actually failed on us right now. So it's giving us a re reading of zero. But I'm working with the construction team and the engineers to get that replaced and get that reading properly. But at the moment, it's just, uh, yeah, it's giving us false readings right now. But with that being said, I had to work with... Um, the electrical company, the guys that installed the uh, installed the meter, and we kind of had to mimic the program where um, where it's reading zero now, but behind the scenes inside the program, it's actually reading eight liters a second, and that eight liters a second is pretty important because that's what the uh, clear pack 180 and the polymer pumps are basing their injection rates at. So we don't uh, we don't really touch too much of what's going on here right now until we get their raw water meter worked at. This guy's pretty important right here. This is our flow control valve. So that's kind of what the electrician had to set to um, to mimic that eight liters a second. Now looking back in our trends, he noticed that the flow control valve is usually right around 35% open. And we usually ran our plant at eight liters a second. So based on eight liters a second, 35% open, that's kind of how he, uh, he tells the program that, hey, this is running at eight liters a second because this is at 35% right now. Once this gets all worked on, he's gonna put everything back to normal and, and then we can run it 10, 15 liters a second, that sort of thing based on what we wanna do. But for right now, that's kind of where we leave it at. And then similar setup here to our transmission uh, pumps. So this kind of monitors our raw water coming in. We have a turbidimeter again that self cleans itself. And then we have the uh, pH Pro so everything there is giving out a reading right now. And if you'll notice, there's little uh, alarms right there. If I actually go into the meter and see what's going on, it's telling me a calibration is required. So these things will actually alarm me when something is needed. And for the pH probe, it's once a month that they need to be calibrated. If not, then this alarm will pop up. So obviously I got some work to do today. So again, similar to ultra filtration unit number two, I'm just checking how much uh, how much water was treated overnight last night. This meter here is actually the uh, it calculates the volume going into the ultra filtration units, where the other two meters actually only get the effluent or what's coming out of the ultra filtration units. So there's some water used for backwashing, um, mem membrane integrity testing, that sort of thing. That so we lose some of the water. Typically, we treat about 90% of what's going into the UFs. This line here is what we call our blending line. So about 10% of what gets treated by the UFs or the ultra filtration units will get mixed with 90% of what's treated with the uh, reverse osmosis or the RO units. Um, so that kind of helps bring the pH back up. Um, that and the sodium hydroxide. So that's kind of why we mix it like that and blend it. Something else that I would normally do, and I don't usually do it until the ROs are running, is check the pressure on the ROs themselves. Um, but usually it takes about an hour before they'll fire up because I just started the plant. So I'll come back to that again. And this meter here is our, is our RO effluent meter. So anything that gets treated out of the, these two units comes through here. And basically 90% of our treated water is going through this unit where, as I said, like the 10% before goes through that blending, blending uh, meter. Again, this is another turbidimeter. This one is capturing our uh, clarifier effluent. And I notice it's not giving us a uh, flow rate. So I'm just gonna clean it out a little bit.
Yeah, like I said, you'll usually want a flow rate of 0.1 liters per minute. When you do get that flow rate, um, your uh, your tomato meter will light up green. Anything below that, usually about ye it'll light up yellow, telling you that there's something wrong with it. If there's no flow going through, like how it was when we got here, it'll go red. So that's kind of a good indicator. You know, as you're walking around, you kind of look at the red, look for the red lights, see if anything's wrong. So that tells me everything's good. This is our electrical control room. I'm just. Um, Basically checking out the run times of each, uh, of each pump. Um, you have our raw water pumps here, our transmissions, our truck fills. The only uh, vertical turbine pumps that don't have the hour meter are the UF transfer pumps and the NF transfer pumps or the RO transfer pumps. RO, NF, they're pretty much the same. So yeah, basically I'm just trying to see if any pumps ran for a longer period of time than they should have. Um, or if, trans if two transmission pumps ran for 24 hours and obviously there's something going on, there might be a leak or something like that. Um, yeah, just any abnormalities that I might find overnight that shouldn't be. But for the most part, everything seems normal. Um, we do have, obviously you can see one is locked and tagged out. That was a transmission pump that we showed you at the start there that, was, that wasn't that was there. So contractor actually have that, has that locked out. So you, when he comes back to install it, he's gonna be the one to remove that tag or that lock. So after I'm done my checks, last thing I'd like to do is come and take a look at the clarifier to see how the water's looking coming in. This is our, this is a pretty important piece of equipment, our primary treatment. Um, if this is out of whack, then everything else downstream is out of whack as well, so. But yeah, these three units over here are flocculators. This chamber I like to call as our reaction chamber. You can sort of see what's going on. Um, you can see the flock coming in. And then right here is what we call our, our settling, our clarifier, our settling tubes. Um, basically, all the flock here is creating a sludge bed underneath these tube settlers. And that's kind of working as a filter as the water comes up. It's whatever organisms, they're getting trapped in that sludge bed, which is why it looks so clear on top of this clarifier versus what you're seeing back here. So a lot of this stuff that's happening here, it's settling out and creating its own uh, sludge bed or filter on the bottom of this tank. Like I mentioned earlier, our raw water our raw water flow meter had failed on us. So it was actually giving false readings to the HMI, which was telling our polymer and our clear pack 180 to inject a bit more uh, chemical than it should have. And the day that it happened, like I come in here and this was almost like a milky white looking because it's had injected so much. Um, so yeah, times like that, we need to drain it. And like I said, about three, four months, like if you go six months, I guess you could probably get away with it. But what will happen eventually is the sludge bed goes septic and, and it just upsets the treatment uh, system. So you usually want to get ahead of it before it gets to that point. And like I said earlier, our polymer injection. So we actually injected into the second flocculator. And then our clear pack uh, 180 is getting injected into our flash mixer here. So usually I'll just shine a light to make sure that it's, it's actually getting pumped through. All good. Uh, yeah, that's, that's basically our morning checks. Like the, the first thing we do every morning. Um, just to make sure everything's running okay. We do also do our lab testing and then there's more monitoring that we um, go through on the ultrafiltration and the reverse osmosis units. But yeah, we usually don't get into those until the units are actually running. So that's basically the first thing we do every morning. That and now I'm actually gonna check the chemical dosage rates just to see that they're within line to what the HMI is saying. So we actually do an actual dosage rate check, which I'll be doing now.